Hello guys, welcome to Lapsus Mental FTV. Thank you for taking your time to come back to my channel because today is, uh, I'm recording a pretty important video, at least in the in the last three months, which is the uh, show. Well, it's showing the result of my custom paint job on the Talanis PX7. And if you have if you have seen the intro, which you have probably done, uh, you know already that. Uh, it has been done using some chameleon paint that ranges from purple to dark green and it has uh, some hydro dipping on top of it. Uh, I wanted to to record all the process and in fact I did but instead of doing a long boring video which no one is going to take the time to look at I'm going to talk about, about the, high, the highlights of the process and then in case you have any doubt you can comment below and I will address the, uh, the questions. So in, to start with, uh, the materials that I have used are the chameleon paints, um, primer, an aerograph and a compressor. In case you don't have the, uh, the compressor and the aerograph, you can use regular cans of paint in order to do the, the priming and the painting as well. But you won't be able to use the brand of paints that I'm using because those are some acrylic paints that are meant to use with an aerograph or a brush. Masking tape, some lacquer, or in my case I used polyurethane gloss, polyurethane varnish from Vallejo. Well, some glue, uh, something not permanent, uh, like a silicone glue that uh, I used in in many parts of my builds and that is in order to glue back the, uh, the screen protector and also in order to glue the, uh, the power button okay? because you are going to disassemble the original transmitter and putting back the new case uh, what I did is oh, well something that you might be also interested in having is a, a spare uh, Taranis case because this is not the original one. The original one is at home. Uh, I did buy an spare one in case I messed up in the process because I didn't want to stop flying and the disassembling and assembling one was done at the really end. So that's that's all the materials that I have used and now let's start with the process. So the first of all is the surface preparation. What I've done is to give it a light sanding on the glossy surfaces on the back of the transmitter. I left the front of the transmitter completely as it comes from the factory. With, uh, it's really on texture here where the, the palm of your hand is going to rest. And, and then I use some Vallejo black primer as a first coat. Uh, I did the, la the light sanding on the glossy surface because I was worried about the primer adherence on the glossy stuff and instead of having a shiny surface then you have something that has been lightly sanded and it is quite easier for the paint to stay in, in place. Remember that you need to leave enough time for the painting to dry and that's going to depend on the manufacturer of the paint and the instructions so please guys make sure that you are patient and that you leave time enough for the paints to set up and settle and, and everything is going to be fine next in terms of surface preparation was applying some masking which is going to bring us to step number two by the way, you are probably seeing all the stuff in this corner. So step number two is masking. Why I did you use masking tape in, in the process? Because I wanted to cover the holes, as you are probably seeing it here. I wanted to cover the holes, uh, for instance, the, these big stick holes, the screen holes, the battery holes, and everything in order to make the hydro dipping process easier. Okay, so I masking, I masked everything from the inside in order to allow the paint to reach all the details in the front and in the back. And also I did some masking for my logo in here and the X7 
Sky Leathers in there. The three Sky Leathers are a kind of st a sticker that I took off, painted gold, and then uh, I glued them back with some lock tag. So, easy process. Masking is way, I tell you. Because it's adding, uh, if you decide to mask anything, it's going to add some steps to your process and also it's going to be well it is messy if you don't know how to do it if you do not wait enough time for, for the paint to settle if you don't, don't uh, there, there are some tips that I have on masking for instance you need to put the masking tape in a flat surface several times to remove some, some of the glue and then you put it on your surface because if you don't remove some of the glue for some tapes when you remove it you can strip your paint job so be really careful with masking I wanted to avoid it but I, at the end I couldn't help myself myself and, and did some masking um, job on this so next, the manu manufacturer of the chameleon paint says that the paint is going to look better on a shiny surface. So after the black primer I apply uh, a light glossy coat with the polyurethane in order to achieve this supposed, uh, supposedly perfect um, final result on the chameleon paint. After the, uh, the uh, gloss layer, I applied several coats of the chameleon paint until I was happy with the amount of tinting of the surface. Each layer that you apply to the, to the surface, the paint is going to be more intense and the true colors of the chameleon paint are going to pop. So depending on the look that you are looking for or you are after, apply as many coats as, as, as you want. Next, hydro dipping. The, the hydro dipping didn't went well at, the, uh, at first. I in fact had to redo all the back side of the transmitter which means the primer, the gloss coat and of course sanding everything before the starting over again. So sand all what you have done before including the stupidly ugly hydro dipping result that I got at first then prime again apply the purple uh, paint and well primer sorry guys something in mind apply the primer gloss coat and then the chameleon paint again and at the end I, I did a successful hydro dip uh, for the back and also for the front which was uh, I'm, I'm, I cannot remember a moment where I was happier than seeing the process go well for the second time because I was so worried of messing it up and that's why I'm covering the hydro dipping film preparation. There are so many guides in in YouTube uh, regarding this process. I recommend you follow them. But instead of doing the uh, the cutouts in the uh, frame in the framing that you do with painting tape or masking tape before setting the the film in the water, what I did in order to keep it manageable and easier to handle I did the cuts when I had already put the, the film in the water because you have around 90 seconds a minute and a half and a minute and a half is enough to go with some scissors and do the cuts that you need in order to allow the film to expand when you put the activator so if you have any doubts let me know it is not easy it is so easy with small surfaces if you start with something like this and some plastic spoons you are going to achieve better results or tiny wood canopies better results then when you move to something big just applying the, the thing into the water is so tricky so take your time practice make sure no water is on top of the thing before doing the dip I'll follow all the instructions 
use the activator properly, everything. Uh, I think I've been showing some samples of wrong application. After, after failing several times, and by several times I mean that I failed just once on the application, but I had to trust another two big samples of, of film because I was not able to let it or place it properly in the water tank. Then I got a successful result, which is what you are seeing here. Uh, by the way, the recommendation is to rinse the objects under uh, clean water. But I also saw someone that instead of doing that, they uh, cleaned up the surface of the water tank where you have applied the hydro dipping. And if the plastic piece is not floating and it goes to the to the bottom of the container, then you can leave it there for half an hour and it's going to be a perfect result. All the, uh, all the substance that is the medium where the paint is layered when, when the manufacturer, uh, manufacturer is doing the, the film, it's dissolved in the water and then you can get your part out without having to go to the bathroom or to the kitchen and rinse the object for a couple of minutes with uh, clean water because first of all it's better for the planet and you should not be wasting water and secondly the, the result is amazing and there is no damage to your to your work what else I think that's all. After hydro dipping, I applied so a lot of a lot of coats of uh, gloss varnish, which remember is polyurethane based, so it is pretty hard. The result is pretty resistant to scratches, which I'm pretty happy about, and it's even nice. It's, it's still perfect. After uh, several flights with this, with this transmitter and finally uh, this process might seem complex or maybe it looks complex to you because you have never done it but if you want you really can push for it and do whatever you want okay so you can achieve whatever you decide to achieve and I recommend and strongly suggest you that if you are curious about the process uh, you go to Orus RC or whatever free sky dealer that you have around um, order a, a spare case practice with something you have at home and go for it because at the end I'm so happy not because this is the most beautiful transmitter on earth because if I know it's not and some people are not going to like the purple and green and gold and whatever but, be, but because it's going to be yours it's going to be original it's going to be the result of your effort and your learning and if you already have some of the materials at home of course go for it because I mean I love the result it's my particular to, to my particular liking but I love the result so, I guess we are done, the video at the end is a bit longer than I wanted, but I hope that you guys enjoyed, remember any question, go to the comment section, uh, feel free to ask, I'm not going to charge you, and I've got no secrets, I'm not going to leave uh, working on hydro dipping or chameleon painting or anything like that, this is just as a hobby. And I'm going to share all my secrets with you guys and all the downs and ups and again thank you for coming, have a nice flying, bye.